Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to all of you to our day related to knees in the emotional week of cancer. So the topic for today is tubers. And I bet for sure that you would never had imagined that close to the end of a long path of consciousness, we would end speaking about tubers. So in the emotional week, let's talk about carrots and potatoes. So let's be aware of two important things regarding plants. So I must dedicate this um, week to my friend that she is doing the corrections of these videos to, um, to upload it in the campus. So um, she hates botanics and plants. So this whole week has been dedicated to her. So let's make just the idea so we can all have a picture of it. So we have here two options, two different options of the different ways of a plant. So first of all, let's, rem re let's remember that when we talk about a plant, we have exactly as the iceberg we spoke the first week, we have a limit, which is here, the ground, and then an upper part related to the conscious, and then lower part related to the, uh, to the unconscious. So the conscious part would be the trunk, the, the branches, the fruit, the flower, the leaves, all the parts that you can see from a plant that are visible outside. And then all the hidden parts in the ground will be the unconscious part of the plant <coughs> with the roots and of course the tubers. So as we have said, the roots take all the minerals that a plant needs in order to send them up to the leaves. The leaves does the, the, process, of, um, uh, the process of photosynthesis through the sun, the light, and through the light, they gain the energy, the power to blossom, to create the flowers, to produce a fruit, where within you have the seeds in order to produce a new plant. This regarding the conscious part of the plant. But when we speak about the unconscious, we also have the same thing. We have the fruits of the ground, which are the tubers. Tubers are like a fruit in the underground that they emerge from the roots and they are useful as a reserve of uh, of water, minerals, salt, and all the products the plant is producing, they are storage here. Mm -hmm. They are storage inside the tubers. So in way of the fruits in the plant, they storage all these uh, minerals and water and salt to produce the seeds. The tubers are here just in case something happened like a drought, for example, um, or there is a lack of any mineral, so the roots can take those nutrients from the tubers. Mm -hmm. um, and also the tubers starts to expand and create new roots that can go along the territory, and from them they can born again new plants aside, like if they are new seeds. 
what we have here is that all these tubers act like seeds and roots at the, at the same time. For sure, you have seen this in potatoes, for example, when you have them and suddenly they start to create a new plant. So they use that. So usually um, we don't eat roots of a plant, we eat the, we eat the tubers. So when you think about eating some things that are growing under the ground, so actually are these structures that the plant are that the plant create in order to storage all the nutrients that have been produced in the plant. Okay. Remember this that um, the fruits are produced to create seeds, and they are in the upper part of the plant, which is related to the fruits of the future, mm -hmm. to create something that we are aware of, that we know what is going to be used for, like trying to make something in the future. Mm -hmm. And of course, here on the ground, the unconscious is a storage of the past, it's not for the future, it's something that is from the past. So the tubers are connecting uh, and storing information from the past, from straight to the, from the roots, which is not for the future. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify some things, um, then you can merge, of course, but remember, there are not all the things that are growing and that we eat that grow under the ground are for example, um, there are some uh, peanuts. Peanuts, they grow under the ground, but they are seeds. They are not tubers. Uh, other fruits that, for example, grow close to the ground, um, touching the ground, like um, the ananas, um, pineapple. Um, the pineapple, <coughs> they have roots, but the pineapple is a fruit, even if it's touching the ground. Okay, um, ginger is a is a tuber, for example. But um, many other things that we consume from the underground are not tubers. Okay, so just you have to figure it out. And once said this, I will give you some task to make. It can seem silly, but is not, and it's it's regarding this here, and can help in our life. <clears throat> the task would be to to wonder from where come the things that you eat. Um, if they come from a tree, if they come from the roots, if they are if they are seeds, if those seeds are born down the ground or they are up trying to check it, trying to figure it out, because sometimes when we eat, we have no clue if they are related to the ground, to the underworld, if they are related to the light, looking for the sun. Um, and acknowledging that can organize also our inner energy, can help us to know from where the things come and um, in what we are becoming, because we are eating that. So it's, um, it's important to know that. I would recommend to do that because sometimes I, I've heard about kids that had no idea from where a chicken came from. They, they thought that they were coming from the supermarket or they couldn't relate the eggs with the chicken um, and, uh, or where a fruit is coming from and from which territory. So it's really important, nice to know where the things come from. Mm -hmm. So we can acknowledge, we can acknowledge what are we eating, what are we becoming, okay? And a lot of people might not know from where things come. I would recommend you to look in the internet <clears throat> for them and you will see images from the plants and to know where it come from. Two ways of 
seeing the tubers. The two ways to see this is um, in one hand, when, remember that yesterday we spoke that the roots are like our ancestors from the past, all the people that have lived before and, and created us. And so tuber would be like a kind of a tumor, okay? That comes from the roots. So many things are storage there that maybe are not um, are not leaving the plant keep going. Like maybe they can accumulate disease. Okay, it could be a risk for the plant, for the family tree that someone is grabbing um, uh, a very old information and doesn't let it go. For example, and in the other hand. A tuber also is a reservoir, is a is a, um, a storage of um, of information that can be used long time in the future. For example, when you take a potato, you can leave it there in a box for months, and it will be still able to create a new plant eventually. So. Even if the plant is wide out, you can make it grow again. You can continue with the information of the entire family. So in our family tree, we usually have some of these tubers that um, sometimes they are so big that they storage so many information from their own that they condition the entire plant, the entire history of the tree. What happened with this tuber that had so much weight in our history? That usually the plant is kind of feeding that tuber and it starts to grow and grow and grow, taking all the sucking all the energy from the plant, for example. When when a tuber starts to go and receive so much energy from the plant they start to grow and expand, pushing the soil around and started to be in pressure. So a lot of pressure around, okay? Uh, so it starts to expand and push the soil up, creating like this hill here. Mm -hmm. The word tuber comes from the, in, in the in European languages that means to expand, to, to yeah, to expand your shape. expand expand is tuber that comes also that that creates also the word tumulu that is this um, hill here, which is the origin of the word tum, okay tom. So for the ancient ones, they thought like or the idea was like when they would bury someone, a person in a coffin they would be like these tubers and they would leave this graveyard like this, like a hill over the, the, the coffin. So everyone could know that below there is a dead body. Okay, so that's why they call it tomb because it is an expanded land, an expanded hill, okay, which is related to tuber. Uh, and also gives the name to a tumor. Mm -hmm. All things that get expanded. Mm -hmm. Tumba, tumulo, tumor, mm -hmm. tuber, tom, tumulus, tumor, tuber, they all come from expanding, from inflate something. Mm -hmm. So like protuberance is like something that is ahead expanding. Mm -hmm. So as you see, all these words are related to death, are related to a dead body in a coffin down Tom. So the bad side of the interpretation regarding a tuber is that 
that a tuber would be in our tree a dead one, a dead body that is so heavy in our history that is still within us, that is still living in our life, uh, acting in our current days. So as an example for this, of having a dead one, a dead body, uh, that is very present in our life. For example, myself, um, well, most of the of the people in the Americas, we have this condition of uh, losing the land because they all have to migrate. So they were exiled from their countries and to live in South America or North America, or Central America. So all these people lost their houses, lost everything and most of them has this trauma of not having a home and they are looking for the independence to start again to do something new so most of our families have this trauma uh, from the past for example in my own family uh, my grand grandfather no my grand grand grandfather the grandfather of my grandfather he came in a ship, uh, in a boat from, from Italy to Argentina and uh, um, migrating and he lost, he lost everything in Italy and he had to restart to do something new in, in Argentina to build a new house. But his, present, his presence was so strong that he managed to push away their own kids from home so they had to to make their own houses so they were always like migrating from one house to another and that conditioned the whole family tree because he was such a heavy person uh in our history that he conditioned everything in our family and um he was so present and so strong in our history that even myself, when I was 10 years old and even more, I used to put the, a frame with his picture, a picture that he had since 1910, a picture of him in my bathroom with his face. Like, I don't know, I was feeling like I was honoring him, but actually nobody loved him in my family. So he was still alive in our family a lot and um so what a person like that is doing is that his presence is so strong that it grows so much that generates pressure in the environment so it's not the environment the history that pressure that person but the person is making pressure in all the others around hmm? so sometimes lose a lot of energy in our attitudes, in our things through our life, but because there is a dead person from our family that is taking a lot of energy from the entire tree, someone that is dead, but even though is still much alive. Besides the story of um, the, the graveyard, of tubers it's important to remember that the tuber is storaging a lot of things that are really good for the plant so it is heavy for us but it is also useful because it is all the things that we need the reason why we are not using we are so basically, we are not using all the energy and all the, the nutrients from the tuber, and the whole tree is trying to nourish the tuber instead. So actually, uh, many of us, we live our lives for someone that is dead. It's like if someone that is in a coffin has so much weight in our lives that we all in our family tree are living the life that that person would love to keep living and doesn't let us grow because we are all feeding its own dream. 
So one of our goals is to try to change that. The goal that we have is to change that circle. And how do we do it? We have to take the energy from there. We have to approach that history and to start changing that point of view. So our energy is not used by the tuber, the dead person, for its own goals, but we use that history for our own process of creating future. So it's the same energy. It's not that we have to change this energy. It's that we have to direct that energy towards another action. Many of us are living a life through people that is already dead. So in order to go towards the future, we have to look into them, to honor them, and to grab that energy towards our own purpose, our own future. So today I explain in the blog, I won't explain all of this now. Uh, I just uh, wrote about that in, in the blog, uh, so you can read it later. But just wanted to explain that in history, we had many different ways in which we can understand these main 10 tubers that are in the tree of life and that help us understand the energy that we have and also the, the full energy and tools that can help us to manifest this potential. So I gave two examples of this, um, one related to the Nordic tree of life, which is Yggdrasil, and the other one related to the Hebrew uh, tree of life, which is the Sephirot. So for example, uh, in, in Yggdrasil, in this tree of life, we have nine kingdoms plus one this the void, and uh, we have many of, of them that are encoding the information of the entire history. So, for example, the most known that you for sure have heard sometime are Niflheim, that is the most dark one. The other one is our existence, which is Midgard, and of course the king of the kingdom of the gods, which is Asgard. So I say this three names because for sure you have heard this in some movie like Marvel movie about Thor. Um, those are three of those tubercles of existence in this tree. So of course that for sure you have seen this image that is the Sephiroth, kind of like this. So each one of them represents like planets, realms and different levels of consciousness in the existence. But we will call it here like tubercles of tubers of tree of life because because they are like the accumulation of the entire potential of the everything for us in our entire um path we have also been working with these nine kingdoms nine heavens or however you want to call them which are the nine the, the ten days that we were be, been using in each one of the weeks so we have the nine vowels, so a, a, e, 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 and so on. And the day, which is the Taurus day, which is the breathing. So every day we have been using one of these tubers that, that are the summary of the entire information of the cosmos. Hmm? Remember that, as I explained at the beginning of this video, uh, they can be taken as fruits or as tubers of this tree. Besides, you can call them fruits or tubers. I would like to call them tubers because they are the creation of the entire data, of the entire information. And then you can activate the knowledge, the fruits, um, sorry, the, the potential that has these tubers with the fruits, which are the letters of language. So, for example, in the Yggdrasil culture, in Nordic culture, you have the runes. And in the Sephiroth, you have the 22 letters of Hebrew. And in uh, Saitu, the um, Atlantean language, we have the 36 consonants. 
So in these old cultures, what they uh, what they did is to um, determine that in each one of these tubers of the tree are like these kingdoms of homes that where um, different people could live, like divinities, dead people, or whoever, natural beings, whatever. They are in different realms organized as packages of information. And through the language, through the letters, you can figure out <clears throat> what data, what information they can bring to you and you can use throughout the communication in history, hmm? through the history that unites us all. So the summary of all this would be that the two verses of our tree of life are determining and accumulating energy and information that can determine our destiny. But if we, through the unconscious, but if we become conscious about it, we can use that energy in order to build our own destiny. And for that, we need to use the power of those letters. Basically, what we have to do is to, uh, in order, if we want to be, to make this this unconscious information into into an aware in, uh, information, we have to use the power of the letters. We have to use the power of the fruits of this tree. So, but these fruits is not the letters itself; it's the meaning, the concepts that they embody. So that's why I wrote in the post today. You can check it later. I, I wrote there about the meaning, the concepts that embody each one of the letters from the runes and also the Hebrew letters, okay? And uh, remember also that um, if you want to know about the meaning of the Atlantean letters and, and how to use them, uh, how to use the concept of them, and go to one of the blogs that I don't remember the name, which one I posted, that I explain each one of the Atlantean letters. And I <clears throat> want to clarify again this just in case. It's not about the letters, okay? It's about the concepts that are in the letters. So, for example, letter L means love. So, don't take the letter L or using the letter L, you will awake love. It's not exactly like that. It's about the concept, what we are talking about right now. Okay, so it's about looking for which attributes you have to activate in order to awaken the door. Okay, mm -hmm. all this is written in the blog. Eventually, someday I will try to do a workshop or something regarding the letters, the 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 power of the words and how to use them and so on, but I will do it next year for sure. The vibration today is Zoom. The statement today is, I am history's vibration.